Welcome to my floss tube channel, Thread the Needle. My name is Ivani and I'm here today with a, another tutorial video on my cross country stitching within a diagonal. But this one is slightly different. I'm going to show how I uh, travel with my thread into the next diagonal. And that's just a variation on the previous method that I shared. So as you can see, we are starting off with the same project that we have been using for these Stitch With Me tutorials. Um, this is Mini Moose Crossing by Heaven and Earth Designs and it's being stitched on two over one full cross on 18 count. So let's begin. What we'll do is we will uh, begin in, well the, as you can see the fabric has already been gridded. I'm not sure if you can, uh, maybe if I can zoom in, you can see all my blue dots. That is where I have my fabric gridded. Now, let me zoom out again, just a touch more, so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so, now that we've, okay, I think I've got it, sorry. All right, so uh, how we will begin is, we'll pick the first symbol in this 10 by 10 stitch width diagonal and we'll go all the way down until we reach the end of the uh, side of the pattern. And we have yet to reach the bottom of the page. I think that comes maybe down here. So I will continue in my diagonal fashion until I reach the end of the page. And um, usually rather than stitching straight across or even just continuing down into the next, because obviously my frame is not big enough, I will just feather my stitches here at the bottom so that I don't leave a um, solid line of stitches just to avoid some page lines just in case my stitching tension is such that it's going to leave any page lines. So we're going to start in the top left of the 10 stitch width column in the diagonal. We're going to select that symbol and let's see what we have. So now we have our thread ready and we're going to start stitching. So as we begin stitching this, I'll try and discuss a little bit um, the method that I'm using. So as we discussed in my previous Stitch With Me video uh, tutorial, we um, I went over how I do diagonal cross country stitching. So that basically means that you mark your chart and your fabric in a diagonals, whether you use uh, a water soluble pen like myself to mark your 10 by 10 squares, or if you use, um, some people like to use thread and stitch it through in the 10 by 10 spots so they know where their grid lines are, whatever method you choose to use, once you've got that done, and if you use Pattern Keeper or a paper chart, you can mark the diagonals on your chart of the pattern that you have chosen to stitch. And once you've done that, you're ready to begin stitching cross country in the diagonal. Basically, it's no different than stitching cross country stitching across the whole page, except that you are limiting yourself to stitch only within the diagonal. It can be 10 stitches wide, it can be 20 stitches wide, whatever you're comfortable with. Now, once you've done that, you start as you would normally for a cross country piece and you start with the first symbol, keep stitching, but don't go beyond that one 10 stitch wide column of stitches. With what I'm going to show you today, what I, I'm going to show you that you can keep within your diagonal, you're going to keep on diagonally cross country stitching. But if you have some floss left over, rather than ending the thread, I'm going to show you how I just continue stitching. But also keep it in a methodical fashion so that you don't get lost or, you know, it doesn't get messy. Um, I like things to be in order. So I find kind of having a little bit of guidelines really help me keep my stitching organized and functional. 
and I enjoy it a lot more. This is a really good method for those of you who don't want to stop their thread or stop their th stitching when they still have lots of thread left on their needle. Sometimes, you know, it, it seems like a waste to have to start and stop and put that little bit of floss away and you just want to keep stitching until you get to the end of the floss. And you know, that's okay. So that's what I'm going to show you. It all starts off the same way you're going to stitch cross country in the diagonal. When you get to the bottom of the diagonal and you still have some thread on your needle, what you're going to do is you're going to travel into the next diagonal and continue stitching that same symbol but from the bottom up and only so far as the remainder of the thread that you have left on your needle. Now, you'll notice we've come to the end of this column and I have stitched all the diagonal stitches, um, all the stitches that need to be uh, completed in this diagonal and all the way down to the bottom. Now, normally I would finish my thread here and get ready for the next uh, symbol to come up in the top of the diagonal. However, because I am doing diagonal cross country stitching uh, with traveling into the next column, I'm gonna continue stitching. So on your pattern, you will check and see where this exact symbol comes in the next column. And you will start from here, from this area, moving up within the same 10 by 10 um, boundaries that you have set, 20 by 20, 10 by 10, however you feel you wanna do it. So I'm gonna continue stitching. And luckily there's a stitch right here, right next to it. So I won't necessarily get that clean line that we have when we do diagonal cross country stitching um, normally and we finish the thread so that we don't travel into the next column, into the next diagonal column, but it'll still look fine. There'll still be a little bit of order to it because you're not traveling all the way into the page, you're just traveling into the next diagonal. So let's continue on. There isn't, I, I only have this much floss left so there's not very much so it should be fine but it gives me a chance to finish that little bit of thread that's left on there so let's see if i can get a couple more stitches in right so we have this and then you know when i'm looking at this symbol the next ones don't appear until somewhere here. If I have enough thread, I will carry it up. So let's see if I can count my way up. 
I might be able to. So we've got right here, right here. And it looks like they're going to be in this block. So we're going to get a couple more stitches in. I think I can gather a little bit more floss to finish that off. As I do a few more symbols, you'll get a better sense of what it is I'm trying to achieve here. Mostly it's just for my own sense of, oh my gosh, I have so much floss on, so much floss on my needle. I don't want to have to pack it away and have to stop and rethread and do all that. I just want to keep on stitching. So for those of you who are like me, sometimes just want to keep on stitching with what you have on your needle, this gives you that opportunity as long as you don't like, as long as you don't mind traveling. Because that is one of the things when you cross country, you have to travel. And I think I can manage one more because we love to play chicken with our thread, don't we? All right, let's go from here. We've got one, two, three. All right, this will be the last one that I can fit in, but not bad, I say. Okay, so that does it for that one. So now you'll notice I did this symbol all the way down my first diagonal, popped over into the next diagonal, and I went, worked my way up. Now when this color comes again, when I'm starting my next column, I will again start from the top. You can also start from the bottom and then that way the next time you'll start it here and then go all the way up and then travel from here. You could go in this zigzag kind of pattern. Um, it's entirely up to you. It depends on my mood on where the symbols are in the chart, but for the moment we're going to go down and then up. All right, so let's move on to the next one. So. This method is good for those of you who um, like to work with a long piece of thread on their needle. As long as you're careful and you don't get it tangled, then it can be good. You can get quite a bit of done on the one symbol. So let's see how far this one will take me. I think we might be lucky and get quite a bit done. So let's see. So this color, um, there's no more in this diagonal. So since I do have still some floss left, I'm going to continue into the next diagonal. So we're going in a zigzag pattern. And as long as you stick within your diagonal, you won't get confused. So 
if you have those diagonal lines here they're imaginary you're just going by um, grid mark to grid mark but on your pattern if you have those lines marked out then it's much easier for you to follow along and you won't get lost you know what I'm saying so uh, let's move on into the next diagonal we're gonna go right here um, so yeah so I have tried many different methods parking is good I got the hang of it after many 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 a trial and error I I was getting the hang of it but I think the main problem for me was that um, my OCD could not handle the hanging of the threads and the fact that I would have to re-thread like in one block if there was only one stitch then I'd have to take the needle off and uh, put it on another and uh, that it just seemed like a time waste to me to have to do that and some people say oh you know you can just use multiple needles and I'm like oh my god that just would not work for me because I um, I have a tendency to excuse me as I count I have a tendency to poke myself with um, the one needle that I'm stitching with so can you imagine if I had multiple needles how that would go oh goodness gracious um, no so that wasn't an option for me so I had to go back to thinking about threading and re-threading and uh, it uh, it just wasn't for me and I found I was so slow as compared to um, stitching cross-country stitching and yeah the picture develops a little bit different you get bits and pieces over time as opposed to um, all together and I get that which is why I started doing the diagonal cross-country stitching and that gives you kind of the best of both words, worlds. Um, you get to see the picture unfold in its entirety as you would with parking, but at the same time, you can keep, I could keep my speed of stitching that I get from cross country stitching. So for me, it was a win-win to do both of these methods together like that, um, cross country stitching, but if I limit myself to a particular, um, area then I don't get confused I don't get lost I don't get overwhelmed because I'm not thinking about all the symbols that have to be stitched I'm only thinking about this one small column that I'm going to work within this can be adapted into many different formats um, even though I have a couple of projects that I stitch uh, I actually have a project that I'm starting to stitch that I'm going to try extreme cross-country stitching. I still use a variation of the diagonal cross-country st stitching method on that. So it, it's so useful in so many areas. You know what I mean? All right. So I think we're going to stop here now for this symbol. And voila. So. It, it does look like you're traveling a little bit more, but it's a little bit more controlled. So I can understand if some people are still not getting it. Oh, it, it doesn't look that easy or it's a little confusing. It's not, honestly. If you keep yourself within your diagonal, you won't get confused, you won't get lost, you won't get overwhelmed. And that's the main thing for me when I see, because I work on so many projects and some of them are very big and I don't want to get overwhelmed. So when I limit myself to these diagonal lines, I'm like, oh, okay, it's just that. And you know what? When you finish that diagonal, it gives you a sense of completion and a sense of, oh my gosh, I just did that. So you have motivation to move on and go on into the next diagonal and the next and the next. And before you know it, you've got a page finish. And it's, it's a great method. So I'm going to stop talking here. I'm going to keep stitching. And please join me.
right, so now we have reached our final color that needs to be stitched. So as I'm finishing it off, you will see that, oops, we have been following the method of cross country stitching in the diagonal with crossing over traveling into the next diagonal. So the benefits of this method is that you can finish the floss that you have threaded onto your needle rather than stopping at the end of the diagonal. You can continue on with whatever's left on your needle into the next diagonal. And another benefit is that for those of you who like to just keep on stitching, this is a method that will allow you to do that in a, I guess you could call it a structured way of doing things. So, because a lot of people can look at cross country stitching and think, gosh, that is so messy and disorganized, but you know what? There is a method to our madness for cross country stitching. And I find when I give myself boundaries to stitch within, I can contain that madness of cross country stitching within columns of diagonals. And sometimes if I'm in the mood to stitch more than just the current diagonal that I'm stitching, I will do this method, which is cross country stitching in the diagonal, carrying over into the following diagonal. So as I finish that stitch here, I'll recap. So I started with this diagonal here. We started at the top, picked the first symbol, and stitched it all the way cross country within this diagonal until there were no more stitches in this diagonal. But if I had floss left over, instead of stopping it there, I would carry over the stitches into this diagonal and stitch my way up. And so on and so forth until this full diagonal was complete and this was partially stitched. So now when I start this diagonal, I already have a couple hundred stitches in. And it's great. I find it just another method, variation of a way to stitch. So I hope this was helpful to any of you, to those of you who have any questions about this method or anything else regarding my stitching, feel free to leave a comment. And in my next video, which will probably be a stitch with me, I'm gonna continue using this project as my stitch with me project. I'll try and answer as many questions as I can. And um, I look forward to stitching with you guys again. So thanks for joining me and I hope to see you guys next time. Have a great day. Bye now.